Hi, this is Jim Starkweather, the publisher of Kitmaker Network and Armorama.com, and welcome to another episode of Cracking the Box. Today we've got the Meng M2A3 Bradley with Busk 3. Uh, Busk is, as you, some of you might guess, uh, another version of an urban survivability kit. This one is the Bradley Urban Survivability Kit, and this is the third um, generation of that uh, extra armor and other uh, features that help it survive in urban warfare. Now this is a brand new kit for Meng in 135th scale. I'd like to uh, apologize to Meng. I was out all sick last week with a cold, so it's been a, a week or so that this has been sitting here uh, waiting, for, waiting for me to do a review on. Uh, I wish that we could have gotten this out earlier for everybody. I know that um, it was out uh, with Asian retailers and so forth. So obviously people are already starting builds on this and so forth. In fact, I wish we would get these kits even before they come out on the Asian market. That would help us uh, kind of at least deliver the news and rather than kind of lag behind, which this video fortunately, unfortunately is probably going to be doing. But for those of you who want to see it in video form, here it is. And uh, let me go ahead and cover the rest of here, what's on the, the box. Uh, we've got, um, again, this is the... Uh, Stegosaurus series, so this is SS004 is the kit number, and it does have a full interior, uh, which is going to be a big, obviously, selling feature for this kit. Uh, some of the things on the homepage, or on the homepage, uh, the homepage of the vehicle, no, excuse me, some of the things on the cover of the vehicle. Uh, full interiors are provided, including accurate engine compartment, turret, driver's compartment, and passenger compartment details. Engine cover can be modeled open or closed. When it open, engine and transmission are visible. Uh, movable suspension has realistic details. Cement-free workable tracks are provided. Uh, let's see. Now, realistic commander's independent viewer and crew and, sus and passenger hatches are movable. Uh, vehicle can be molded without or without, with or without, excuse me, add-on armor. Tow, uh, tow any vehicle missile launcher can be built in folded or firing position with with without missiles, uh, coaxial machine gun sight moves with the main gun in elevation. Uh, in a innovative type, well, TP, innovative TPE passenger seat belts are perfectly reproduced, the real things. Full set of modern U.S. vehicle antenna systems included and precision uh, photo etch frets are included. On the side, they include uh, some shots of the interior car uh, compartments and both directions or both sides and then on the other side uh, there's just info on the the bradley itself uh, info on the kit talks about how it's it's uh, 203.5 millimeters long 107.3 millimeters wide and 97.1 millimeters high um don't see any kit number parts let me see if that's anywhere else on the front here that's always a good thing to add. I would suggest to men that they add that, just so people kind of know what they're getting into. All right, so let's go ahead and crack her open, shall we? So as you can see inside, we've got lots of plastic. This is a very, very tall kit box, probably the tallest one I think I've ever dealt with, other than maybe a super large box. Uh, this is not a, a standard standard size box, but just a really, really tall, uh, tall box. So an interesting way to do it for them. Um, obviously a lot of additional plastic in here due to the full interior. So that you can see that some of the interior is actually molded in this light green plastic, which uh, is similar to the interior color that the US military uses, obviously. Uh, people are still going to need to paint it, but uh, at least it kind of gives you some kind of base color to work with. Um, so that first um, fret there was very clean, very nice. I'm um, looking at the second one here, which has a lot of external uh, details some of the additional uh, bolt-on armor pieces, uh, some of the hatchwork, all very clean. Uh, some of the coaxial machine guns, uh, one of the coaxial machine guns is up here. Don't see any production issues on these. Now again, I'm just unboxing the plastic for those of you that might be new to, the, to our videos. Uh, I will be doing photos at the end of the video that you can see uh, up close details and so forth. So tune in for those uh, towards the end if you need them. Interesting, there was actually a little a little twig in the packaging. At least I think that's a little twig. I don't believe I introduced that from the outside anyway, so maybe a, 
an Asian twig sneaked into the packaging. <laughs> um, so probably uh, with the static electricity cling on the on the uh, plastic. So again, more interior parts here. Um, very nice, very clean. Typical Meng detail and quality that we've been seeing from them. Um, and uh, more interior parts here. This, so that's uh, four sprues down. Here's the fifth. Uh, again, more of the uh, the curved shielded area inside the uh, crew compartment there. Uh, I'm not sure if that shields the commander, uh, what that does, or if it's a storage area. Uh, some of the fan details, I think which are going to be under, under a, a grating, I believe. Um, and uh, more external details. Here's the top of the turret and bottom of the turret. And again, just more hatches and various uh, uh, parts. And there's the main... Um, the main gun, uh, which looks like a one piece, and it's even, uh, wow, nice slide molded piece there, I think, um, or at least uh, some kind of a high tech delivery because they've actually bored out the end here. I can actually see the holes. I'll get a, I'll try to get a good photo of that, but it's, it's difficult to see, obviously, in the plastic. So, uh, again, more so side armor, um, more bolt on tusk, busk armor. And uh, wow, just the, just the plastic keeps on coming here. This is just a lot of plastic. Um, really nice details though I see in this. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to spend too much time on this in, in terms of just talking about how good the plastic looks because I think we've already seen a lot of this on various uh, posts and forums and, and again you can tune in for the picture, pictures at the end here. But uh, let me go ahead and just try to get everything out. And then this is the uh, engine bit, some of the turbines, visible turbine areas. Um, I think that those two parts were actually duplicated. Uh, let me just double check on that. Oh, no, I guess they are individual. Nope, nope, that was the engine block and then other things. Okay. And then we have uh, one sprue with its duplicated here. At least, well, actually it isn't duplicated either because I can see that's different. <laughs> so this is J and uh, J and, well, actually they both say J. Why does that look different? Oh, I guess it's just angled on me. It just the, changed this little piece angled. So it looked like it was a different piece, but it was not. All right, so some of the back the back hatch area, and some nice grating here, which is uh, you can see through and very well very well produced. And again, more of the side armor or side uh, hull actually probably areas. Um, actually, no, that is the side armor, and then and then or the side, and then this is where the armor kind of bolts on. Uh, then we have um, interesting. Oh, these are the seat belts they were talking about. Which are already preformed and just put in this bag, I guess, to keep them from getting around. I'm surprised they didn't put those in a separate bag, to be honest. And uh, then we have some clear plastic, lots of crystal, many, many little driver ports and things like that. And then we have the two main hull pieces here. And I'll pull these out and get a better get a look at a fit. Actually, let me go ahead and see if I can just quickly open these. And all right, so let's take take a look quickly at uh, how the fit is on these. I'm having can't believe it would be anything but perfect uh, based on previous experience so far with Meng in terms of their their kits. Uh, yep, it looks very good. Very good indeed. I don't see any issues really in terms of the fit of those two parts. Very A very fine fit though. I mean, it just they just fit right on top of each other and there are obviously some, some uh, little, uh, not even pins, they're kind of uh, more of a... Uh, um, notched uh, type of arrangement where they're in the notches fit in and uh, looks good all right moving on some of the road wheels and suspension parts again two two of those identical sprues with some rubber grommets and then we have the individual track lengths which are obviously numerous it looks like it may just be a one-to-one -one type of relationship and then you have to snip apart uh snip apart the uh and clip off the, you're going to have to clip off uh, additional uh, plastic on the ends and then a center piece that needs to be clipped and then you'll have the two pieces that fit together, I would assume. And then uh, we've got also a um, little, some cylinders here, metal cylinders, probably part of the suspension. Some of the photo etch, more photo etch, or more decals actually, more photo etch, grills, lots of grills. Um, some signs, signage, 
placards for US military vehicles and again lastly the decals which are very small very 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 fine lots of little uh, warning labels and notice labels and things like that that go all over the vehicle and then lastly the the manual well that I'm just feeling this box this is the this is some seriously sturdy sturdy cardboard uh, yeah, they they really they went all out on that one, boy. That's the again the sturdy, the sturdiest cardboard I think I've ever seen um, for a kit box. And uh, so you can see the manuals in color and uh, has some sections here on information both in Chinese and in English. Um, and again uh, in Russian and maybe Japanese or I'm not sure there. Um, so introduction of related persons they talk about uh, general abrams or excuse me general abrams general bradley sorry i got abrams uh, ever since i've been doing the, the busk tusk thing i've got abrams on the brain general bradley of course who uh, was from uh, world war ii uh five-star general in the u.s army and um and then we have uh the step step-by-step -step process uh, step you know one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and up to let's see we go up to 27, pretty much got most of the vehicle together though. 33, my goodness, 39, uh, 45, 51. This is a, not, a, a, not a, as you can see just by the assembly of all the different component pieces, it, it's obviously got a lot, a lot to this kit, as you can also tell from the number of plastic parts involved. Part, or excuse me, step 61, there you go. You know you're going to have your 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 project cut out for you in terms of just fun work, and then um, they have uh, some various uh, schemes. We've got, looks like we've got uh, vehicle the first battalion, 68th Armor Regiment, Fourth Infantry Division, U.S. Army Kuwait, 2003, and the next one is the vehicle of the Third Infantry Infantry Division, U.S. Army Iraq, 2005, and the last one is vehicle of the second. Squadron 3rd Armored Cavalry Regiment, U.S. Army, Phase 3 of Operation Iraqi Freedom, Baghdad, Iraq, 2005. And we have a color reference chart here on the on the end with A.V. Vallejo colors. And that would be it. So um, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the close-up photos and uh, then come back and conclude.
Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed the photos and detail shots there of the plastic parts in this new kit from Meng. We'd like to thank them for sending it to us, and um, uh, and I hope you guys uh, probably are already enticed into buying uh, this newest and probably one of the best Bradleys you could build, I w I'm going to say right up front, looking just at the parts. Um, unless there's serious uh, accuracy issues with this, which I kind of doubt. I mean, there's always accuracy issues with any any kit in terms of just, you know, getting the f little small finite details right. Um, but, uh, or at least with getting some of the small finite details right. But I, I have the sneaky suspicion that probably Meng uh, did their homework on this one, and I'm sure there are lots of good guys out there who, who know this vehicle backwards and forwards who are uh, letting us know right off, right, right there, whether it's uh, accurate or not. But I'm not speaking to that because I'm not an expert on the Bradley. So, um, if you uh, would be interested in this kit to do a full build review or build feature with, uh, give me a uh, email at publisherkitmaker.net. I can't make any promises because it probably will be uh, highly in demand. Um, but if, uh, but if that's something you think you'd be interested in, let me know. And uh, thanks for watching this video. Please remember you can comment and uh, click like on the video and all those things, whether you're on our website or whether you're on YouTube. Uh, and thanks again for all our YouTube followers as well. Uh, we've got now, what, 13, 1400 you guys, and we appreciate uh, your patronage on the YouTube site as well as uh, watching them on our main website or our primary websites. Thanks for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next time.